when it comes to standard bevel down bench planes, there's a whole system of parts in here that work together to give you a good or a bad cut. When I first started woodworking, I could not figure this out, so I switched everything to bevel up planes. Bevel up planes don't, they're not the most efe efficient and effective when it comes to a lot of things other than end grain. I, I do think they're the best for end grain. So what I want to do is I want to take the time to explain what's going on in here, because if you understand what's going on in here, you know how to set this up properly. You know how to fix errors if they're coming up. I already did a video on how to square the frog. I'll try to put a card if I remember. I also already did a video about backlash. So we're not going to talk about those two things here. Right now, we're just going to talk about these parts and how they affect each other. So the very first thing is the cap. The cap and that screw hold the iron and the chip breaker against the frog, which hold it in place. And that's very important. So a lot of people like to just wiggle this and make sure you know that it's, it's, it's set. You also got to wiggle the iron. So right now it's good. If I take this and loosen it, that was only a hair. This is snug. Hear that? The iron's moving. So that's not enough. We need to tighten this down because we don't want it to move by just our hand pressure. We want it to move when we want it to move by touching this or touching the depth stop. That's it. So now it's snug back down. So that's one of the first things you want to check. If you're running into issues like that where things aren't staying set where you have them, it's going to be this. The next thing I want to talk about is the chip breaker. Now the chip breaker, I need you to think about it as a set point. This right here is a set point. Why? Because it rests on a yoke and that yoke goes down through onto the depth screw. That yoke, it'll tilt up and down depending on if you're uh, advancing or retracting the blade, but it does not move along the face of this frog. So that stays where it's at. So when you are adjusting your chip breaker, this stays still. You got to look at this point as staying still. So I'm going to hold that and I'm going to move the, the iron along it. So if you have the chip breaker set higher on the iron, the iron is going to cut deeper. It's going to go farther through the mouth of the plane. You won't even be able to put this in there when it's set too far back because it's gonna hit that wedge point and not rest. It's gonna get wedged in here. If you put it too close, so if I put the chip breaker too close, you're moving this iron higher up on the frog, which means it's gonna go shallower through the mouth. If you set it too close and you go to adjust the depth, you're gonna to have to have this thing so far back that it's almost falling out because it's resting on a fixed point and you're just trying to push it down, but the iron's too high. So when you are setting up your chip breaker, you kind of have to find that sweet spot. It's not too too close, you know what I mean, that you have to have this all the way back. Um, if you have it too close to it, it might not take good shavings, it might just be a scraper and give you a dust at that point. If you have it too high up, you're probably not gonna be able to get it in the plane and you're probably gonna be getting some tear out. While this plane is in motion, while it's functioning, this chip breaker is used to clear the waste. It also helps prevent your iron from cutting too deeply into your workpiece. Mouth size kind of has an effect on that also. When you're setting this, you can't look at a video and say, okay, he set it about an eighth of an inch. That's what I'm going to do. It doesn't work like that because each plane has a different fixed point. So if I pull this one over, I did just do a review on this video. If I pull this one over, this fixed point is at a different spot. So I can't just say for every single one that I grab, this is where I'm going to set it and it's going to be good. Here's the other one. This is the other one that I set. That's a lot closer than I'm going to put this one. And that's okay. So when you're setting this up, find the sweet spot. You're going to have to do some trial and error here. And then eventually it'll become... Like second nature, that's too far. Yeah, so eventually once you get this figured out, you're going to know, okay, for my plane, I know I need to set it here. So that'll come in time, but until you get that, you got to play with it a little bit. The other thing I want to talk about is the mouth size. So we got this resting, well, I have this really far back still. So we have this resting on its fixed point. I'll retract it all the way, that's too far, it's going to start rocking. There we go. 
When you have this in the plane and you start advancing it, watch the mouth size. That's this opening right here. Watch that. See, it gets smaller and smaller. That's because I'm advancing the blade. That's going to affect the mouth size. Now, this is kind of a good mouth size for me. Sometimes I like a little bit more. If you need to adjust that, that would be scooting the frog back. If you have your blade to where it's advanced and you're able to take shavings and the mouth is too big, you're going to need to scoot the frog forward. If you advance your blade and it hits the front up here, you need to scoot your frog back. That's going to take a little bit of trial and error until you get it set for your plane. When you are setting up the frog, there's something that happens that I think a lot of people miss also. The back of that mouth should be resting in this bevel somewhere. If the back of the mouth is hitting up here, you have your frog too far back and you're going to blow out the back of your mouth. So it should be resting in here. I don't want you guys to stress on setting these up. Once you get the frog set where you like it, you don't need to move it. Um, you set it up once and it's pretty much done. So you need to take your time with it and get it set up correctly. The iron and the chip breaker and the cap, these three things are pretty much the only things you remove. You take it out to sharpen it. You put it all back in. Where you set this will become habit eventually because you'll know your plane. And if you mess it up, it's okay. Scoot it back a little bit because you know that the frog's good. So once you get your frog set, if you're running into issues, check your chip breaker again because that chip breaker is on the fixed point. So again, let me just go over how these work together. Just because I want to make sure you guys really understand this. So the cap holds everything together. It holds it in place. The chip breaker rests on a fixed point that's about right here. That fixed point goes down. It's the yoke. It goes down onto this depth adjustment screw. This depth adjustment screw advances and retracts the blade. If your chip breaker is too high... When you're setting this up, your iron is going to be too deep. If it's too low, your iron is going to be too high. It's tough to try to show you while it's in the plane because this doesn't move. It's really only our iron that's moving, but that's affected when you're setting it up before you put it in the plane. The other thing the depth adjustment screw does is change the mouth size. So if you're advancing the blade and your mouth gets too small, scoot the frog back. If you're advancing the plane and your mouth is too wide, scoot your frog forward. So I hope that helps explain how all of these things work together. The lateral, I'll mention it just because it's here, the lateral changes where the blade is like this. So the frog does forward and back. The lateral does side to side. So if your frog is not square, that lateral is only moving it side to side on that plane, on that face. So that's why it's important to make sure your frog is square, but I have that other video about that. So please let me know if you guys have any questions. I really hope that you found this helpful. Uh, these are kind of things that I wish I would have known when I started woodworking. Um, yeah, have a good one.